Hello, what's up, YouTube photographer Ronix Sweet and I try in this tutorial. You're going to be learning how to do skin retouching in just 10 minutes. So just spare some 10 minutes of your time, and you're going to be understanding frequency separation skin retouching from the very start to the very end. So if I don't find the video helpful, I request that you hit the like button because this is going to help you to push and recommend this tutorial to many people, and it is also going to help the channel grow in the long run. So I request that you smash the like button on this very video. So let's just proceed. So frequency separation is a skin retouching technique. That is going to divide the image into the high frequency layer and the low frequency layer. In the high frequency layer, we have the textures, and in the low frequency layer, we have the colors. So we're just going to divide this very image into two layers so that we can refine the colors alone and perfect them and also refine the textures alone. So at the end of it all, when we combine both layers, we're going to end up with a nicely retouched image or a very beautiful image at the end of it all. So we're just going to come. And make sure we are in Photoshop. After dragging in the image, you're just going to come and simply press Ctrl J. So make sure the background layer is locked. So you press Ctrl or Command J once and press Ctrl or Command J the second time. So just going to double click right there and we're going to, we are going to name that to low frequency and we're going to name uh, the upper layer into, we're going to name it to high, high frequency. So like I said, the high frequency layer is for the textures and the low frequency layer is for the color so just going to turn off the high frequency layer and select the low frequency layer then you're going to come to the most important step for frequency separation so this is the most important step when it comes to retouching images using frequency separation so you come to filter right there up here then you come to blur and you're going to come down to gaussian blur right here so this is the most important step if i told you want to retain textures within the photos after retouching so make sure you take the radius all the way down and if at all you're having an action, you can simply play the actions. And usually, the action is going to stop at the point when you have to put in the amount of Gaussian blur. So by Gaussian blur, we're going to basically be removing the textures from the low frequency. So it can, we can only remain with the colors. So I'm just going to come and zoom in or zoom out. And look for an area that has prominent skin textures than the rest of the image. So around this area, that is where I have more textures than the rest of the image so zoom in and you make sure you can see that area quite well so simply left click on the radius and start taking up the radius so you left click and hold down and start taking up the radius so you have to take up this radius up to a point when you just start to lose out on the skin textures in the image so just come and continue taking it up so you have to be looking both here and on the overall image so you can see that at around 7 is when I'm just starting to lose out on the textures or the skin details and I'm just going to come and click on OK. So this is going to make the image look a little bit blurry and out of focus so don't mind about that. So you're just going to come back and you're going to come to the high frequency layer now activate it by clicking on the eye icon. Then you're going to come to image and you're going to come to apply image. So when you come to apply image you can notice that I have 16 right here meaning my image is going to be a 16 bit image and if at all you have 8 right here it means that your image is going to be an 8 bit image so you have to apply different frequency separation techniques under the apply image option as i'm going to explain for you right now so just come to the layer and make sure you, you select your low frequency layer the source is the name of the image so you select your low frequency layer you click and drop down and select the low frequency layer so you're yeah, basically extracting our textures from the low frequency layer make sure the channel is rgb and the blend mode for a 16-bit image is going to be add and the opacity is 100 percent make sure preserve transparency and mask cannot check the scale is 2 and offset 0 and make sure you turn on the invert option so when you do that you can notice that the textures on the gray kind of layer which is also lacking color so this layer is only containing textures and is lacking colors then if at all you have 8 right it means your image is going to be 8 bit and the settings are going to be quite different so make sure you select your low frequency layer the channel is rgb and make sure the invert option is not turned on the blend mode has to be subtract or past 100 percent preserve transparency and mask cannot check the scale is 2 and this time around the offset is 128 so the scale is 2 offset 128 and with the preview turned on you can see that we have the textures on the gray kind of layer so what i'm going to do basically i'm just going to switch back to 16 because i have a 16 bit image so i'm just going to come and use add the scale is to offset zero and turn on the invert option 
and just going to come and click OK. So right now this layer only has the textures. So we just want to review back the colors within this layer. So we have extracted the textures. So just come to the blend mode and change it from normal and change it down to linear light. And you get back the image that it was meant to be before. So just going to select both layers and press Ctrl Command G on the keyboard to group these two layers. And you can see if at all I hide the original image, you can see there's no difference between these two images. So I'm just going to click this so you can rename that to frequency separation. So I'm just going to click and drop down this. So remember, like I said, we only want to remain with the colors or we refine the colors alone and also refine the textures alone. So I'm just, I'm just going to come to the color layer and make sure I select it. And this time around, I'm just going to hide the textures so that I can only look at the colors and perfect the colors or skin tones in this very image. So just going to come under the brushes, right click and get what we know as the Mr. Brush tool. And if I told you don't have the Mr. Brush tool right here, you can find your Mr. Brush tool down below here. So after selecting the Mr. Brush tool, we have to make sure we set it well. Make sure the hardness is at 0% and make sure clean brush is also selected. And we have two options that say load the brush after each and every stroke and also clean the brush. So this is going to be the opposite of this one. So make sure you select clean the brush after each and every stroke. Remember, as you're touching, you're dealing with different colors in the skin. So make sure the brush is going to be automatically cleaned when you select this option. As you're trying to retouch, the weight is going to be 9%. The load of 75%, the mix at 90%, and the flow of 100%. Make sure sample alias is not selected because when you check this option and you're trying to paint, it means that this brush is going to be also copying textures from the high frequency layer. So make sure sample all layers is not checked or selected or ticked right here. So make sure you are on the low frequency layer and with the brush tool selected, you can slightly zoom in. Don't zoom all the way in because when you do this, you won't be seeing the uneven skin tone transition. So always make sure you retouch at a distance because this is going to help you retouch faster and look at the skin tone color inconsistencies better at a distance. So with that done, if I told you Mr. Brush tool is showing a plus icon, make sure you press the caps lock key. And if I told you want to increase or decrease the size of the Mr. Brush tool, you can use the open and close box brackets on the keyboard. So as you're retouching, how to retouch you simply left click and hold down and you move your missile brush tool in the direction of how a given area is shaped so you can see the forehead is moving in this kind of direction or an up down kind of direction so i'll take my missile brush tool in that kind of direction so i'm just going to move it in this kind of direction so make sure you mix colors that are looking alike together and you mix the highlights alone the midtones alone and the shadows alone and while they are trying to transition from one area to another, just come and mix that area so that you can create that nice and smooth or seamless blend between those colors. So I'm just going to be working on the image and you have to keep on reducing on or decreasing on the size or increasing on the size depending on an area that you're trying to work on. So I'm just going to come on the cheek area and move my mixer brush tool in this kind of uh, direction because the cheekbone is moving in an up down kind of uh, direction so i'm just going to uh, be moving in that kind of a uh, shape or direction so i'm just going to reduce on the size and I work on the nose area so i'm just going to be forwarding this because i don't want this to be a pretty long tutorial and now you can see that i'm done refining the skin tone color inconsistencies and now the skin is looking a little bit more even so i'm just going to turn on the texture layer by clicking on the eye icon and you can see a before and after for just working on only a skin color or skin tones and now the skin is now looking a little bit more on the uniform side so there are some areas that you may have missed out when you're using the mixer brush tool to blend or even out the skin tone transitions and with that i'm just going to come and select the, the lasso tool and make sure new selection mode is activated and the feathering is 20 pixels because I want the edges from the selection to be smooth and we don't want those harsh lines from the selection so make sure it is 22 pixels and you're just going to simply left click and draw a shape so you have to keep away from the eyebrows or uh, the edges of the face or even the hair so after making the selection just come 
to filter and come to blur and come to Gaussian blur. Remember, we are still selected on the low frequency layer. So just come and take up the radius up to when you're just starting to get a nice or smooth transition. So at around 2100 is when I'm just getting a better skin texture for uh, the image. So alternatively, you can just use the previous radius and multiply whatever radius that you had for your frequency separation or Gaussian blur by by three so seven by three is 21 i'll just type in two one and you can see that gi that gives us the same results i'm just going to come and click ok and i'll just be applying this on almost all areas so to deselect a given selection just click out from the selection because you have activated a new selection mode so i'm just going to come and draw those shapes so you have to keep on following the shape of uh, that area that you're trying to work on so when it comes to the nose area you shouldn't apply it on the overall nose so just come and apply it on these other sides of your nose right click and apply the gaussian blur when you feel like it's too much simply right click on the selection and come to fade gaussian blur and simply reduce on the opacity of the effect so i'm just going to come and also apply this onto the other side of the nose so don't apply it on the highlight because that is going to make the nose flat so you are now done retouching the skin so you can say quick before after before after so I'm just going to come to the high frequency line now, select it, and it is time to remove the blemishes or skin imperfections. So just come and select the clone stamp tool, and with the hardness of around 0%, mod is no more, opacity and floor 100%, align is also checked, and make sure the sample is in current layer because you only want to deal with the textures that are part of the currently selected layer. So you're now just going to zoom all the way in. And you're going to clean up or remove the skin imperfections or the blemishes. So how to use the clone stamp tool. You hold down the option or alternate key on the keyboard. So you hold it down and left click on an area that is clean or that doesn't have a blemish on the skin. That is near the blemish. So alternate, left click to copy that clean area and simply release the alternate key on the keyboard. And left click over the blemish and that is going to replace the blemish with clean skin so i'm just going to be removing the blemishes and you can see that this is going to do a pretty nice job so i'm just going to remove this tiny imperfection that the model really has a good skin i should say and we have less work to do while cleaning up or removing the blemishes so i'm just going to zoom out and now we are done removing the blemishes or skin imperfections and you can see a quick before after before after so right now we just want to save the image that is going to be sharp at the end of the day so just come to file so we're done retouching the image just come to file export and come to export as so when you come to export as it's going to open up the export as window and in this window you have to put in these settings right now so for your settings you are just going to be seeing the image in this black window and it's going to load right there make sure the format is jpeg quality 100 percent Make sure the resample is by cubic sharper. You select, you click and drop down and make sure the scale is at 100% right here. Make sure 100% is selected. And the resample is by cubic sharper. Make sure you also embed the color space and also convert sRGB. Make sure these two are checked and simply click on export when the image is done loading right here. So this is how you can retouch in just 10 minutes. And if at all you have learned a thing or two, from this video don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe this channel if at all you have been watching and you're not subscribed yet to this channel ronix from Ronix photography thank you for watching i see you need more amazing shows and don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating